You better start. Those of you who don't know, my name is Ramesh Prabhu. How many of you follow me on Twitter? Good. Good. I decided to tweet because nobody listened to me. I told my wife one day, I'm going to change the world. And I've had an amazing career. I started learning about patient safety after my own mistake. I had a six-week-old baby without a brain damage. I was a young consultant, only four weeks. I wanted to make every child the safest and the best. And six things went wrong. There were two babies with the same name, same date of birth next to each other. I was a consultant only for four weeks. I saw a very faint bruising in the penis. And I had worked with Chris Hobbs and Jane Wynn, two leading authority in child protection. They had always told me, Umesh, there is a soft organ if there is a bruising, think of child abuse. But it was so faint, I was not very sure if it was a birthmark or it was a bruising. On the one hand, if I tell you are abusing your child, I'm putting parents through a lot of anxiety if I'm wrong. So on the other hand, if I miss it, the child is at risk. So I didn't know what to do. I asked my junior doctor to get an x-ray, which is a skeletal survey, special x-ray. He didn't realize there was one more baby with the same name, same date of birth, next week, the first week. We didn't have any handover, we didn't have any policy, we didn't have any procedures. I just did what my previous consultants did. At the end of the ward round, he took the wrong notes. He gave it to the nurse who was not in my ward round. So she didn't realize she was taking the wrong baby. So she took the x-ray baby for the x-ray, brought the x-ray back, and gave it to the sister who was in my ward round. So she thought, yes, Dr. Rui had asked for babies with A. She put it in the wrong box. So you can see how things went wrong. I sent the baby home that evening without realizing the baby didn't turn an X-ray. And stepfather was abusing the baby. He stamped on the baby's skull. And baby was admitted to Rochdale one week later. And one of my friends, she was senior consultant, Dr. Buxton, rang me. She said, Umesh, this X-ray can't be normal. There are 27 rib fractures. And 16 of them are old fractures and there's a callus formation, and this baby is brain damaged. And only I know what I went through. One hand you feel guilty, one hand you feel sorry, one hand you feel apprehensive, name coming in the media. My biggest worry was my parents coming to know in India that their son is a useless doctor, and because of him, the baby developed brain damage. I was crying for the last three days, 1982 and only my wife felt the pain. But I always had learned lesson from my mistakes. At that time, it was not very strict for the doctors. Today, I would have been probably suspended for two years. So I put eight systems in the place. I called everybody, and I thought that at the end of it, within four weeks, 36 weeks old, baby died. I didn't make any mistake. Nurses and junior doctors made the mistakes. Three things went wrong. And both of them affected me. I felt I was unfit to be a doctor, let alone consultant pediatrician in charge of these babies. But I met a lot of wonderful people in this country. I went to see my mentor with whom I was senior registrar in Oxford. He said, Ramesh, don't do it. He said, you owe it to just be babies. That one sentence transformed me. I was like a coward running away from the problem. I wanted to go back to India. But that sentence changed me. So the last 25 years or so, I've done nothing but why doctors make mistakes. That took me to organization, culture, subconscious, bias, institution, racism, professional regulation, you name it, I've done it. I've given probably 200 lectures and done 100 workshops. And I want to take you some of these three, how Vegan has been transformed. So I, with the help of my colleagues, I had done a consultant with my own values and appointed four very good colleagues. And we started clinical governance. And nurses knew, 365 days, 24 hours, you can call any consultant if the child needs you. The child needs us. And I can tell you, over 18 years, they have called me twice when I was not on call. And both the time I was able to save the babies. And because of that, I was asked to the medical director, Barry, at the age of 42. I told my chief agent, Dr. Philip Bacon, Philip, I don't want to have a heart attack. He said, Umesh, we can spare you. <laughs> I'll be very honest today because beauty of candor is what we need. That's the reason why. Please don't mistake me. I'm a very blunt talker. I've been called so many names. I told Simon when he took me to meet the Queen. I said, Simon, even if you begin so be, I don't have space to write. 
So I've been called many names. Simon Stephen is the one, and Bruce is the one who gives me hopes for NHS. And actual reason was one of my white colleagues said, I don't want the Indian to be medical director. That was the second thing changed. My wife knows. If I want it, she wants to do something, tell me I can't do it. I, do it. <laughs> <laughs> I was so upset with that statement because I met a lot of wonderful people. This is an amazing country. I'm writing a book about white culture, BME culture. When the book comes, hopefully you will enjoy it. So I went home, I told my wife, I'm going to be medical director. <laughs> and uh, she said, you are mad. I said, 12 years you're not realized, you will never realize. <laughs> <laughs> so I applied, and believe it or not, five of us applied, I was appointed as medical director because I was so determined. I sent my family to my friend's house, prepared for five years. I'm not that. I'm like a dog with the bone. And if anybody thinks I'm not going to sort out NHS, you have misunderstood. And even if I resign, because I've seen so many tragedies, so many tragedies. My first book is 22 Angels. I give an opinion on 22 children who have died in this country. Not in one should have done it. And their parents' pain drives me to do what I do. And I want to tell you the story of Fatima. I was a healthcare commissioner advisor. It was a Thursday. That was a 22nd child. I got a file at home. I used to get 30 pound an hour, but I used to love the job. So you can see how badly others manage, and you learn a lot. Fatima was a seven-year-old girl. Her mother speaks good English. She takes her child to a GP. She gives a clear history, two weeks history of fever, loss of weight, loss of appetite. As a pediatrician, I could make out that he's still young, unless otherwise. And unfortunately, GP gives her amoxicillin, sends her home. One week later, mother goes to see partner. He changes it to erythromycin, sends her home, doesn't admit. Two days later, mother says GPs are no good. So she goes to a teaching hospital in this country. And seen by a junior doctor. What a beautiful clocking. These are the people who make me extremely proud. She writes at the end, needs urgent investigation. Diagnosis PU of Pyrex of unknown origin. Unfortunately, overruled by registrar. Child was sent home with the appointment to consultant clinic four weeks later. One week later, part one comes unconscious. She gets admitted to intensive care. She coughs blood every day in the hands of that mother and dies after 46 days. I want you to feel the pain of that mother watching your child die every day for 46 days. The worst is yet to come. And I got the report, that was a cover-up. Experts said everything had been done. She dies after 46 days. That was a 22nd child. Hard enough. 2009, I told my wife, leave me alone. How many more children have to die? I went for a walk. It was in Hollywood Lake. If anybody wants light bulb movement, come with me. <laughs> I was crying for one and a half hours. I was asking only one question. You may you have done everything in your life. You have been a pediatrician. Your children have done very well. You have been a medical director. What's your purpose in life? I had never asked that question until then. I had never asked. We all do things because it comes in our way. We never ask what's our purpose. Tonight I would like you to go home and ask yourself that question. What is my purpose in doing what I am doing? It took me one and a half hours. At the end, I realized the answer. My purpose is to make NHS safest and the best, and to take out the mother's pain and the parent's pain. I started tweeting. Today, I got 18,000 followers. Everybody is scared of me. What a life I have. <laughs> and then, I became NPSA board member, because of changes I have made in WIP. And, and when I was medical director, I had two, uh, 600 patients waiting for first appointment to be seen by a consultant for more than one year. 1998. I had 298 patients waiting for their surgery for more than 18 months. And out of those 100 patients who are waiting for simple joint injection for more than a year. These are elderly patients who may have given their life during war. And two orthopedic surgeons were messing the system up. And I, one of them said, Umesh, give me 1,000 pounds. I will do waiting list initiative. I will do six joint injections for you. Six joint injection for me. Isn't it amazing? We have such consultants and we don't do anything for them. I was shocked as a pediatrician. I never thought patients are for bargain. I never thought I can make money out of patients. I never even thought of it. 
If I, today I would have sat there. 1998, I was very naive and innocent, and BMA stopped me. If you want me to talk about BMA, I need one day. <laughs> <laughs> so I reduced the waiting time. I took control. I went and told Philip Bacon, my chief agent, Philip, I'm going to be in charge of waiting time. So I rang the GPs. I was junior doctor in Berry for five years, and most GPs knew me very well. And what is support I received? They said, Umesh, we have been waiting somebody like you. Just do it. And waiting list, joint injections were finished within three months. I still look for a bomb under my car. <laughs> <laughs> it is at that time I collected 27 patients who were harmed due to doctor's mistake. I was asked to dismiss three doctors. I refused. Not because any reason, but there were systems failure. I told the board it's wrong to blame one doctor, one nurse to such an extent we destroy their career. Interesting, when I met the parents, when I met the family, not even one family wanted me to sign. I was very honest, I was very sincere. That is my grandma's advice when I was six years old. I come from a very poor family in India. My favorite <coughs> thing when I was six years old was ice lolly. My father couldn't afford it, and he would always say, you don't want ice lolly, no? and you have no choice to say yes. But my grandma had an ice lolly for me. She always had it, even though she didn't have money. And she told me two things. Son, always be honest, always be sincere. It won't make you rich, life won't be easy. But you will die a peaceful man, and you will remember your grandma. Even now I miss her. The second thing she said, if your conscience is clear, you have nothing to fear. So simple advice. I gave it to my children. Both my children have done very well. So I collected those 27 patients. I was always for the family. I always ask outside expert, which is family who will tell me what to do. And I ask the family about the doctors, what should I do? And not even one family wanted me to sack the doctor or the nurse. Today one is a consultative geologist, second one is a staff director, third one is a GP. Then I joined NPSA as a board member. I didn't enjoy the job. So, and I became NKS advisor. One of the best jobs I have done. 14,000 doctors have been referred to NKS. And today, 400 consultants and similar number of GPs have been suspended. We are trying to remediate. 50% are not remediated. Because entrant behavior, they are not willing to change. I saw tragedy after tragedy, tragedy after tragedy. So 2009, I told my wife, I want to be a medical director again. I want to go somewhere and change it and show how we can do things. She said, you are mad. I said, 10 years ago, you told me, you are not here. <laughs> So I went to Wigan. I went to Wigan not because I wanted the job. I wanted the job in actually Penang because I live in Rochdale and Wigan M1, M62 is a nightmare. It takes you one hour in the morning. <laughs> but I went to see Mr. Andrew Foster. I don't know how many of you know. He was in the Department of Health and he wrote consultant contract. And slide number eight, he had made derogatory comments about doctors. I was waiting to meet him. That's the only reason I went. I went in. I said, Mr. Foster, I don't want your job. But I wanted to see you. you insulted my profession. Poor chap takes it on the chin. <laughs> and we had two hours, we had 45 minutes, we spoke for two hours, and then I realized that's where I wanted to work. Today I'm going to show you the result of what we have done. I'm very proud of NHS, it's a great institution. And NHS social care are the two jewels in our crown. If there is one message you want to take home, please take that message. But be careful, I looked young and handsome, that's what happened to me. <laughs> Brewski always inspires me. I met now all the leaders of NHS. I spent one to two hours, they all know me very well because maybe they're scared because I tweet everything. I don't know the reason. But they all gave me appointment and I really, Simon Stephen is the one who gives me hopes, Brewski gives me hopes. I'm pretty confident we can transform it. And he always inspires me. Martin Wilson, what he summarizes simply about leadership. People always ask me, what is leadership? And that's the one more point I want you to remember. This is what leadership is about. Very simple. It took me 10 years to understand, but, you know, leader's job is to appoint right people. Tell them what needs to be done. Support them to do it. Work with them by being kind, caring, and compassionate, and being a role model. Staying in the heart of your staff is what leadership is about. Teach them to care for staff and create a culture of staff happiness and sack a few. <laughs> I've dismissed six consultants, nine have left the organization, 
I will refer to GMC twice. I told them third time, lucky for you. <laughs> I will invest here for bullying five months. But my grandma's values are not for negotiation. Be honest, be sincere, do the right thing, find good in people. These are the simple advice which I give. So if anybody thinks I'm arrogant, my apology, I've been called much worse. <laughs> right. How many of you are proud of NHS? Raise your hand. Good. I'm really, this is the third time I've come here. I love coming here. I always tell Stephen, you got a fantastic crowd. Usually I get like this. I said, you're half proud. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how much I really know about your NHS. Everybody tells me we don't spend enough money in NHS. I recently asked one of my friend's son, young and dynamic ophthalmologist, just became consultant. I said, how much we spend on NHS? He said, 50 million pounds. <laughs> How bad NHS is. Right, first question. How much you spend on NHS? Let's go to this corner. You thought Dr. Ruby is going to teach us how to do things. I don't bottle feed anybody. I never breastfeed anybody. Right, how much you spend on NHS? Give a number. Seven billion. Seven billion. Higher. Huh? 110. 110, correct. 110 billion on NHS. Right, next question. How many patients die each year due to medical mistakes? For this How many patients die? Give a number. 10,000. 10,000, higher. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. We are not that bad. <laughs> 50,000 patients die each year due to medical mistakes. United States, 98,000. Australia, 14,000. Denmark, 10,000. There are all publications. But the most important next question. How many patients suffer more than six months of permanently disabled due to medical mistake? Give me a number. 55,000. How many mistakes we human beings make every day? My <laughs> wife tells me hundreds. <laughs> Any idea? Five to seven mistakes. Dwar is human. If you don't make mistakes, you don't learn. But as a doctor, as a nurse, you can't afford to make mistakes because somebody's life is in your hands. How much money we waste in NHS? Any idea? Any idea? Pardon? 25 billion. My first article is coming very soon where we waste money in NHS. Pardon? I'll tell you all that. I'll, I'll read the article. The article is published. If I tell you everything today, you may not read the article. <laughs> How many doctors are referred to NHJNC every year? I've been referred twice. I'm an expert. <laughs> Any idea? 12,000 doctors referred. So 1 in 26 doctors are referred. Those of you who are doctors, don't panic. Don't panic. Within 26 years, every doctor will be referred. Bruce Neo just now told me he was referred last year seven times. How lucky he is. So I'm now working with the GMC as well. Because Karen Stevens is a good friend of mine. He came to Wigan, he saw my governments, he was very impressed. I just met him very recently. What's the current medical legal bill for the NHS? Any idea? 1.2 billion. But actual bill is 15 to 20 billion pounds. If duty of candor works, if everybody is honest and sincere, it is 15 to 20 billion pounds. That is what wakes Simon Steven up. <laughs> I spent 45 minutes with him, and it was an amazing meeting. He definitely gives me hopes. How many managed CEOs have been referred to the regulator or God? <laughs> Somebody asked me, who is in charge of NHS? I said, I met God. I asked him, he said, don't ask me difficult questions. <laughs> Any idea? Not even one. Who is in charge of NHS? When I know, I'll tell you. <laughs> Patient safety. Number one, keep it simple and make it simple. Your staff work very hard. NHS, 80% of your staff are very value-based. I told Simon, 80% of doctors don't give me any headache. 20% keep me in my job. If not for them, I won't have a job. So that's the reason why. I have seen so many tragedies, I don't find anyone difficult. I can tell you stories after stories if you have time. Your staff work very hard. NHS is good at making simple things complicated by setting too many bureaucracies. <coughs> work smart, not simply work hard. 
Our trans uh, what I'm going to tell you is our trust transformation and our success, why we have been so successful, benefit to patient and staff, and what three things you are going to do differently tomorrow. This is my email, this is my Twitter ID, I tweet everything, good, the bad, the ugly. I get up at 4 o'clock, start tweeting. <laughs> I'm very proud and passionate about NHS. It's a great institution. Vast majority of patients get the best care. This is the statistics. Each year, 360 million patients are seen by 1.3 million staff. Vast majority of patients get the best care and safe care. And some of the stories I can tell you, we got how hard our bed managers, a and work, they make me very proud. It is they who keep me going. This is a fact. Each year, 20,000 patients die and 55,000 patients suffer more than six months. Please remember the red one. 85% of harm to patients are preventable. 85%. We have prevented harm by 90%. This is the statistics for your doctors when you go home today. Every organization, this is a Canadian study, New Zealand study, NCAS study, and GMC. Summary of all the study. I've done it. Any given time in any organization, 1% to 6% doctors have a problem with their performance. 5% doctor's behavior is so disruptive that it puts your patients, staff at risk, and good team working at risk. One in 17 doctors drink excessively or take drugs during the lifetime as a doctor. Not at any time, lifetime as a doctor. 15% of doctors perform is affected due to ill health during the lifetime as a doctor. Now that's the bad news. Good news is they all work in your neighboring hospital. <laughs> Each year, 12,000 doctors are referred to GMC. GMC referral has gone up by 36%, but I don't think GMC is really getting the right doctors referred. Each year, 1,000 doctors are referred to NKS where I worked, where I was trained by a once best barrister, how to sack anybody. It was a fantastic tip, very good advice. That is what I now train many medical directors. So far, 48 doctors have been charged with manslaughter. 22 doctors have committed suicide, 80 have died within a year of referral to GMC, and remember, 85% of those tragedies are prevented. In Wigan, last three years, no doctor has been referred to GMC. I cleaned them within the first two years. My simple message to our patient, I was appointed in 2010, these are the messages I cleared. Patient is a fellow human being, and not a broken bone, not a patient with the breast cancer. The day we forget, we are unfit to be a doctor, or a nurse, or a manager. It's a fellow human being. It may be you, it may be me. I had sepsis last year. My blood pressure was 70 systolic when the ambulance came. And the two hours they would have found my dead body. I was alone at home. What a treatment I received. The day we forget it, we are unfit to be a doctor, or a nurse, or a manager, or a physiotherapist. Patient safety and quality of care must be our only purpose of coming to work. That is everybody's responsibility, everybody's duty. Be kind to staff, care for everyone. Happy staff, happy patient. That's the second mantra I introduced. Third one is duty of candor. Always honest, always sincere. I personally take the responsibility of meeting the family. And we had a lot of tragedy for first two years. Now, in the last three years, we have not had any young patient dying or any harm. Create a team which cares for patient, but also cares for each other. Very important. Appoint right leaders, extremely important. I ask four questions to the nurses, junior doctors, GPs. Who is the best consultant in the department? Because you have to be a role model. But leader has to be a role model. And nurses know whom they would call when the child is very sick in my department. And that is the one who is the best consultant in your department. Number two is a nice human being. Number three who is a good team player. Number four, whom do you want to see as a leader and why? The question why makes us think about it. Very rarely we think why. Why am I going for shopping? We never think. My wife says, let's go for shopping. I never go with her now, anyway. So I don't have time. You know, I want to sort out NHS. <laughs> so we never ask that question why. It's a very rarely, it's a difficult question. What is very easy? How is very easy? But why is the most difficult? And I always say, go back home today. Start asking why you had a lot of things. Appoint right leaders, create right team, and deliver. These are the five mantras which we introduced. 
We got 45 awards. This is the proudest moment of my life. It was three years later. First six months, I came to know the organization. I met 120 consultants individuals. I met junior doctors in small group. I met GPs in small group. GPs were amazing what they told me about NHS, my own organization. <coughs> so Andrew Foster started his journey. He attended IHI conference in so 2007. So he wanted to make patient safety as the priority. I joined with a lot of experience with him. And today we are the second best trust in the Northwest, fifth best in the whole of North. 450 less patients die every year. I'll tell you why, and I'll tell you who is the person behind it. I didn't do any of these things. It's all our wonderful staff who did it. All 22 quality measurements have improved. I'll show you the evidence. We got 47 awards, complaints reduced by 35%, and third best performing A&D, and third best for friends and family test. We got best provider trust of the year, patient safety award, 90% reduction in serious harm. I'll tell you what we measure. Staff survey feedback improved 33%. In 2010, staff feedback was bottom 20%. That was the burning platform we had. And today we are the second best in the country and fourth best in the nation. We are not perfect, still a lot more to do. But I won't be that. I'm living weaker by the end of March to sort out NHS. <laughs> this is the result. <coughs> Anybody can challenge me. Please, I love people who challenge me, but be ready to get back. <laughs> so this is the result. And this is the number of patients harmed. 516. First year itself, we had very good success. Last year, for example, we had 46 fractures in 2011 in, in the hospital. Last year, 11. But even that 11 is too many for me, because somebody's father, somebody's mother, somebody is harmed. So what happens is I go through every week complaints, litigation, coroner speech, like SUI, clinical incidents, and the team has to tell me why the patient has such a severe injury. It's not about blaming anybody, learning each other, helping your staff. Once you have more than three fractures, the whole team has to come, senior nurses, and then we put systems in place, and they have to present that to the safety and quality committee of the board, unless I'm convinced there's an embedded practice is embedded in that organizing department. This is my proudest chart, happy staff, happy patient. The green one is bottom 20% in 2011, and we were now the second best in the country. Happiness of the staff, we measure. It is, as you know, Picard Institute measures it, we don't measure it, and that is what the graph is. So my advice is very simple. I'm now going to give some clue how to do it. Focus on simple things which matters to your patients. Whatever you do, NHS does a lot of things. NHS collects a lot of junks. I don't. Leadership is very simple. Do the minimum where you get maximum benefit. So I'm going to tell you what we focus. Focus on things which really matters to your patient. Focus on incidents where you get maximum benefit quickly. Appoint right leaders, clinical leaders. I go through my clinical director 16 questions every month, six months, and chief agent gets a copy of it, and he gets a copy. Clinical director gets a copy of it. I have to change three clinical directors. Create the right team. Create right culture where staff can thrive and staff feel empowered. Implement robust governance. It's our governance which is robust and accountability and measure and show improvement. These are some of the tragedies which I saw in NKS which gave me the confidence. And these are real tragedies. I want to tell you the story. Three nurses somewhere in the country went and told the clinical director of a and the staff with smells of alcohol from three different occasions. Nice clinical director calls the staff day to his office to have a discussion. Staff day says, I'm a Muslim. It's against my religion. Those three nurses are racist. The word racism. Immediately discussion stopped. No escalation. No referral to occupational health. No, dis no documentation of the discussion by the clinical director. And 10 days later, 10 month, 8 month old child was given 10 times the dose of phenytoin under the influence of alcohol. And nurses were so upset, they rang the mother. In this place, nobody listens to us. The mother referred the clinical director to GMC. What a tragedy for everybody. So in Wigan, I've told them, these 10 things, you have no option. They have to come to me. I made the decision. I've seen so many tragedies. So I gave that within first week of joining the department. Hopefully, GMC will take it further 
and we will write the guidance for the GM, medical directors, clinical directors, and we have to provide training. We have tragedy for everyone. The second one, local consultant I had to dismiss. I was in my office, administrative clerk said, Dr. Prabhu, I'm really sorry, I know I shouldn't be troubling you. It was around 9 o'clock in the 9, 9.30 or 10 o'clock in the morning. The carer came out, she was very upset. I asked her what happened. She said, I don't want to see that local consultant. He asked me to sit on his lap to show my mother's eye. Mother has got dementia. So I told her, I told my secretary to cancel everything. So I went to see statement once again. The barrister had told me, take the statement, take the statement, have a witness. Then then that. So I went and met her, I apologized. I told her I'll take further action. So she gave me the statement. She was very nice. She said, Doctor, I'm scared to come as a witness. I said, I don't need a witness. I asked the secretary to sign it because somebody had witnessed with me my statement. These simple things are was trained by the barrister. Don't make life complicated. Life is very simple. We like make it complicated. When I was went and told him, I said, I'm going to suspend you now. I'm going to investigate. I'm going to train the agency. I don't want you to come from tomorrow. Anything you want to be in, please do anything at all. But I'm going to tell you, it's a neutral act. But I got the statement then and here only. And the student nurse came forward. He had been molesting her for five years. But the interesting thing was, I rang NCAS, where I had to ring when I suspend somebody. And my friend, with whom I worked, he said, Umesh, we knew this guy. He did two years ago in London. They just paid him one month's salary and didn't even investigate. What a tragedy. What a tragedy. What do we do with those medical directors who doesn't even investigate? Don't ask me. <laughs> this is one more tragedy. This is a, somewhere in Midland. Everybody knew this consultant was a bully. Junior doctor registrar admits a patient. She initially thought it was asthma. Then she realized much serious. At 2 o'clock she does the blood gas. Blood gas was pretty bad. She rings a consultant. And consultant refuses to come. The child should have been sent to ITU at that time. As a pediatrician, I can tell you. She gets it. It does the blood gas two hours later. It was worse. She rings him again. He refuses to come. Six o'clock, her child has cardiac arrest. Who was referred to the GMC? The junior doctor. It is shocking. It is absolutely shocking what I've seen. And then when we investigated, there were three emails from medical director about previous concerns and nothing was done. So how did we reduce harm? We focused on things which matters. We focused on mortality. Most importantly, batches for our patient and the family is their loved ones dying. You know, they won't come back. And that's the reason why mortality is extremely important. So HSMR is one of the most important things. Martin Farrier, please invite him. Those who are doctors, does a fantastic job. He went for IHI conference. He came back as a converted man. On a Friday, he gets only four, one PA. He goes through all case notes. And by Monday, he sends email. 27 patients have died. 26, we did everything right. One patient, we could have done this, 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 this. That generates fantastic discussion. It goes to almost all senior staff, 1,900 staff. It's amazing, complete anonymous confidentiality. The only person who comes to know who is the consultant is me. He sends private email to me, which this consultant didn't see the patient for three days. I have a gentle word with the consultant initially, first time. Second time it is gentle. Third time, no more gentle. My children, they both of them have done very well. My daughter will tell you, daddy tells first time nicely, second time nicely, third time daddy does that. <laughs> so that's the reason why. So Martin Ferrier, please invite him. It's an amazing work. He has got fantastic 16 years experience now. He is the one who does it. And this is how our HSMR has come down. Actually, patient dying, 1,351 less death in the last few years. 400 less patient died. Hospital acquired infection, we focused a lot on it. It matters to our patient. 5,000 patients used to die with MRSA in UK. Now everyone has reduced it, but still more to do. So these are the things which we focused. Hand wash, audit. I, woke, I go to ward, I watch. Anybody and everybody. Nobody knows what I'm doing. They think I'm just tweeting that tweeting. Because I love tweeting. <laughs> so actually I just watch them. And then we have a just gentle discussion. Create an excellent team. Rob Nelson, one of the most committed microbiologists, supported by Linda, 
absolute amazing leaders. We got fantastic audit and we have reduced. This is our graph. MRSA. This is CDF. Sepsis. I myself had sepsis, so I know the feeling. 2015, 73rd December, I was admitted with sepsis. I was supposed to go to India to celebrate my 60th birthday. My dad had invited 600 people. My wife had gone. I had one or two conferences. I said, I'll come back on Wednesday. But my sad Monday, I was admitted in hospital. That was my blood pressure. That was my EM state. 40,000 preventable death every day alone in sepsis in this country. So what we did, Subhash Nandavan, amazing guy, anesthetist. He has got a fantastic team. Sepsis 6, mandatory, training to everyone, measure sepsis 6 and give back feedback, annual event with sepsis champions, and regular audit and feedback. Medicine management, very important, second most common cause of harm to your patients. In the United States, 7,000 patients die every year due to medical medicine mismanagement. This country only one study long time ago, 400 patients, and I think it's under reporting. So CTC, unannounced inspection, I was shocked. 32 things they found wrong, and our pharmacy director took it on himself, and now we've got a fantastic system. I was ashamed, and the board was ashamed what they found out. And Mike Park took the initiative, and he started doing audit, and we implemented 32 things. More pharmacists for each wardrobe, intensive support for staff, more scrutiny on whole medicine management. We do regular audit, and the ward gets the feedback. More intensive training for junior doctors and nursing because I know the drugs which are causing death, I'll tell you in a minute. And focused on most dangerous drugs which cause a lot of problems. And now we are invested in electronics prescribing and we are invested in hospital system, 14 million pound a year, last year. I think that will reduce harm significantly for us. Remember these drugs. I've seen death in all of them. Insulin, warfarin, gentamicin. Morphine and morphine derivatives, steroids, methotrexate, cardiac drugs, digoxin, anesthetic drugs, antibiotic policy we strictly followed, and we now got simulation which we use, and consultants use every example, which I have seen so many tragedies, they use it for training the junior doctors. Elderly care. For me, this is the most important. My dream is to make elderly care the best in this country, because if you can care, for elderly patients with dementia, with kindness and compassion, you know the heart of care. The margin of error is very small. Severe harm and most common harm is elderly patients. So we focused on pressure ulcer, dementia, fractured neck of femur, frail or elderly care, medicine management in elderly, sepsis in elderly, and fluid and nutrition. We are not perfect. We still get 6,000 incidents. We had eight never events. I think that's because our culture is very open and only one patient came to harm. We still get 400 companies reduced by 35%. We have 70 medical legal cases, 20 SUI. We still have a long way to go. My dream is very simple, to make Ridington, Wigan and Lee the best trust in the country. Where every patient says, this is my hospital and I'm looked after well by kind and caring staff. But for us to do that, the second sentence is equally important where every staff says, this is my hospital, I'm looked after very well, I'm very proud to work here. It's a sense of belonging to the organization is missing in many staff currently in NHS because they are so pressurized. Martin Luther King, Mahatma Gandhi, Nelson Mandela had huge influence on my life. And this is what Martin Luther King said, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter to us. Patient safety should matter to us. Quality of care should matter to us. I became a doctor to make a fellow human being better. I've seen too many tragedies, and for me, nothing else matters. NHS belongs to us. It's a great institution. Let us not leave it to politicians to sort it out. We as doctors, nurses, clinicians, patients, managers, leaders, and public, we must work together and transform NHS. We will not transform NHS without transforming social care and without using IT. I saw some amazing IT. And now my cunning in India, now my cunning plan is to out India as well. Simon Sivan has visited us. Lord Pryor came. Jeremy Hunt has visited us. GMC, the whole team came, just with one tweet. NMC has visited us. <laughs> Healthcare Ombudsman has visited us. 
and like NHS employer says, hey, David Cameron resigned before I could invite him. <laughs> <laughs> Theresa May has too many things. She has got Brexit, she has got Donald Trump, and Jeremy Hunt. I don't know which one is. <laughs> <laughs> Leadership is very simple. It took me 10 years. I was managing doctors. Managing is very easy. Managing is telling somebody what to do, and if they fail, blame them. Leadership is staying in people's heart. It took me 10 years to understand value-based leadership. So only when I define my values, I realize what leadership truly is. Where there is a will, there is a way. Where there is no will, there are plenty of excuses. This is the biggest challenge we have. Do not underestimate. With Brexit, I was in a <coughs> conference in Manchester. It's not my opinion. Don't shoot the messenger. Eight economy professors there. Brexit hold is probably 180 billion pounds when the Brexit start fighting until we turn it around. And that is the NHS budget before Brexit, which was predicted. With Brexit, nobody knows what's going to be the state of this world, this nation. But I'm pretty confident. If we get the right leaders, if we get IT-based industry, if we train our youngsters on IT, if you look at countries like India, China, look at United States, Korea, Samsung, IT-based industry, they have done extremely well. That is what we got to see. And that is all our collective responsibility. Remember what John F. Kennedy said, don't just ask the what nation can do for me. Ask yourself what I can do for my nation. Michelangelo's quote, I gave it to both my children. Both have done extremely well. And this is what I gave them. The greatest danger for most of us, not that our aim is too high and we miss it. It is too low and we reach it. Mahatma Gandhi's final words, they are very good ones. He said, keep your thoughts positive, they become your words. Keep your words positive, they become your behavior. Keep your behavior positive, they become your habits. Keep your habits positive, they become your values. Keep your values positive, they become your destiny. Thank you very much for listening.